Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, the Career Discovery Meeting webinar. Um, it is exactly 1 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, 12 o'clock Central, um, and I want to get started. I know that a lot of you folks are at schools. Um, you're taking time away from other duties um, that you perform, um, taking away maybe time from your lunch. Maybe you're eating your lunch right now. So I want to thank you and be respectful of your time. Um, I, I really do want to wrap this up within half an hour just to give you back um, your time, give you back some of your Wednesday so you can go back um, you know, to doing your very important roles. So um, thank you for joining us. Uh, like I said, in communications about this webinar, maybe you've heard um, this is going to be recorded um, and will be shared for you all to watch later. Maybe you have a colleague um, or um, someone that works in, with schools um, that wasn't able to join. They were still interested in watching the webinar. Um, a link will be provided for everyone to be able to watch the webinar at a later time. You can rewind it, um, go back and maybe go over a part that you really wanted to know more about or, or that you maybe have missed while you were taking a bite out of a sandwich. That's totally fine. We're sharing that video. Um, I do have a short presentation to give y'all um, everyone's favorite slide deck um, PowerPoints, and I do have some demos to show you on completing and logging uh, the career discovery meeting for students and then what you can do as a school user. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen now. Um, you should see my slide deck coming up. So you just got to go through all my open windows, unfortunately. There it is. And then I'm going to hit play. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just get dive right into the information, starting out with a brief overview um, of the career discovery meetings. Uh, so career discovery meetings, also known as the 30 minute meetings, um, and we are trying to phase out of 30 minute meetings. We know it's it's a pretty apt description when people call it 30 minute meetings, but career discovery meetings is what we've adapted here at the Commission for Higher Education to refer to these meetings. Um, were created by Health Enrollment Act 1002 um, from the previous year's um, legislative session. So um, a, a lot of what was comes from eight from uh, the career discovery meetings um, was in two pages of uh, House Enrollment Act 1002. Um, it, it, the, the General Assembly gave us the um, administration of career discovery meetings and how we wanted to implement them, um, along with some guidelines of, you know, how those meetings are structured and how they're going to be implemented and how students had to complete them. So um, when we decided to implement the career discovery meetings, we really are following the direction of the General Assembly and trying to our best of ability, yes, following Indiana State Code, but also trying to be as flexible as possible and be and provide guidance that um, works the best for students, for schools, for entities conducting these meetings. So um, yes, there are some things that we really do need to follow that unfortunately um, we cannot be super flexible about due to Indiana State Code. However, um, with your feedback and thank you for those that submitted um, questions and feedback in the form um, that I provided along with the link to this to this webinar, um, we're open to hearing um, feedback. We want these career discovery meetings to work for everyone. Um, there is some great opportunity um, and some great positives of career discovery meetings and we believe that you know they could work for everyone to give students you know um a really good kind of plan after high school to say hey if you want to go into this certain field or this certain position um this is the education that is required this is what that road there is going to look like um to tell to give entities um employers and labor organizations you know an idea of you know what um the future workforce is looking for in a job you know to have that talent stay here in the state of indiana and you know and also hopefully um for schools to hopefully give you know some some um you know some benefits to you know career um and uh college um, coaching and preparation as well um we know you know we try to say all the time that we know the counselors have a lot on their plates um and you know and we know when we try to say you know we don't want to put more on your plates even something like the career discovery meeting um you know we know it's going to put a little bit more on your plate however we try to make it as light as possible so um working with the resources that we have um that are at our disposal and then you know with our you know with you all as wonderful partners um we believe that we can make career discovery meetings you know uh, uh, successful for everyone um as best as we can but anyways back to the actual you know career discovery meetings um webinar and what you, you what you're here for um so high school juniors and seniors um, in a school that is maintained by a school corporation or a charter school are required to have career discovery meetings each year. So one year per junior year and senior year. So one year, the junior year, they complete a career discovery meeting, senior year, they complete a career discovery meeting, two meetings total before you know they graduate or leave high school. Um, you'll see on there that we did mention school maintained by a school corporation or a charter school. That does mean that private schools um, are not held um, to this um, implementation. So students at private schools do not have to complete a career discovery meeting. 
And then basically what the meetings do is they discuss the current and future career opportunities and the education levels needed for various careers here in the state of Indiana. Um, it, at, at the beginning of the career discovery meeting section of House Roman 1002, it says connect connecting students with careers. That it, that's essentially what the um, meeting and what the um, what the um, what the purpose is of the career discovery meetings that we are implementing. Um, the 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 entities that can conduct the career discovery meetings um, are the colleges, and universities, also known as post secondary institutions, um, intermediaries, um, so organizations that connect individuals um, with careers, employers, and labor organizations. Um, and then we said this before, um, but, it, but I will say it again. And anytime anyone asks me, um, I will say it that the 23 2024 school year, the school year we're currently in, is viewed as a pilot year um, with full implementation meant for the 2024 2025 school year. Um, that means once we start 2024 25 school year, um, a lot of these um, more, um, for example, like the waiver process to be more established, so that there are more um, more of those easy to access. So so you will have access to those as well. So um, there should be, you know, less of a uh, for example, um, kind of trial run through this as well. We know that, you know, it is late in the school year. Um, we are, you know, giving the guidelines, you know, we just built it into scholar track. Um, it just came out on um, late February. So we know that, you know, for a lot of schools, this is, you know, that there is kind of some concern that, you know, that students had to complete this meeting. They had three months. However, we're telling you that, hey, yes, we, we want students to complete the career discovery meeting. However, you know, for the 23, 2024 school year, um, it is considered a pilot year. Um, and then lastly, and then as, a, as a segue towards my next slide, is um, the Commission for Higher Education, um, or CHG. Um, we approve the eligible colleges and universities, um, the intermediaries, employers, and organizations that conduct the career discovery meetings. Um, that being said, um, post-secondary institutions um, in House Enrollment Act 1002 are automatically approved to conduct, conduct career discovery meetings. You'll see on there um, all of the Indiana State and all the Indiana institutions, post-secondary institutions are uploaded into Scholar Track to, to be selected that a student completed a career discovery meeting with. Um, and then um, intermediaries, employers, labor organizations, or schools uh, or schools on their behalf must fill out a brief form. And I say very brief. Um, it is about six questions. Um, very easy to do. Um, actually, I forgot to mention that um, in the demo, I'll also um, describe the form. I will show you the form um, and how to fill that out. Um, it's just basic information um, to go ahead and fill that out and be approved um, as an entity to conduct career discovery meetings. Um, the only thing on the school side um, is that approved entities must follow school's guidelines for entering the building. So we approve the organization. However, um, the school has to improve, approve the individual with that organization to come into your school and conduct the meeting. So, for example, and, and I don't think that's changed since I've been an outreach coordinator. When I went to work at schools to work with students, I had to present my, my um, state issued driver's license um, to kind of, I guess, go through a quick background search um, to be able to enter um, the state building. Um, every school was a little bit different how they implemented that process process, same process um, for individuals looking to conduct career discovery meetings um, at your schools. Um, now onto the meeting logistics. Um, I do get some questions about exactly, you know, what does the meeting entail? Um, what do schools have to do exactly um, for, you know, for, the, for entities and individuals looking to conduct these meetings? Um, fairly simple. Um, so career discovery meetings um, have to occur on school property um, and they have to be in person with no more than five students at a time during school hours. So as a school, you just have to provide the space for the meetings to occur um, along with the time um, and given the space for those five students to be in there at a time. You do not have to incur any costs or pay for anything for those meetings um, to, you know, to actually be conducted on your school campus. That's also um, stated in um, House Enrollment Act 1002. Um, for the actual meetings themselves, um, besides the discussion of current and future careers and their required education, um, the first 25 minutes of the meeting um, are allocated to discussing those careers and their education, and the last five minutes are saved um, to complete the career discovery meeting or log the meeting into the scholar, um, um, which I will show you. Um, that makes it easier um, so for schools don't have to worry as much. Um, to, for students to complete the meeting, to set more time apart, or to you know have students come into the counseling office to complete those meetings to scholar track, um, or for example, like have a scholar scholar success program um, lab as well. Um, it takes a little bit more um, of the workload off of schools and off the counselors, so they're not hunting down students if they already completed the career discovery meeting. They've done it with the person that was conducting the career discovery meeting right then and there. 
Um, there are a couple of exceptions um, or amendments um, when it comes to your discovery meetings on with intermediaries. Um, a student can attend an in-person meeting hosted by an approved intermediary at a time and a place convenient for a student. So that means a student can attend a career discovery meeting um, outside of school hours and outside of school campus. It was convenient for them. So for example, let's say a student goes to intermediary A um, on a Wednesday afternoon um, and they want to do a career interest assessment. They find out about their top five careers. Let's say their first interest is architecture. Um, so they learn about architecture. Um, the um, the the coordinator at the intermediary, intermediary says, oh, if you want to go into architecture, these are some of the current, you know, um, architecture firms here in the state of Indiana. Um, this is if you would, you know, you would need a four year degree. Um, so you would have to graduate with this high school diploma, go on to this po to a post secondary institution, you know, go into an architecture program, um, you know, really map that guideline out um, and then just go ahead and record the meeting after that. Um, but as simple as that. Um, and then the other um, exception is for post-secondary institutions, so colleges or universities. Um, you know, there's no limit on numbers of students attending a career discovery meeting um, if they're being conducted by a post-secondary institution or or a college or university. Um, that being said, we know that a lot of these things have already uh, taken place. Um, so any meeting, any of these meetings um, that you know fulfill these standards happened on July 1st, 2023, or up until today, um, April 24th, 2024, those count as a completed career discovery meeting for this school year, the 2023-2024 school year. So students can go ahead and go into their Scholar Track profile or account and go ahead and complete the logged meeting using that information for that meeting. So um, waivers and opt outs. Um, there are a few waivers and opt outs um, that I'm going to go into details about because there are there are some qualifying programs that the student, for example, is in a current specific program um, or if they want to be opted out of doing a career discovery meeting, um, they can go ahead and do that. Um, and these are the here are the four exceptions for it, or the waivers and opt outs. Starting with um, a student does not have to complete a career discovery meeting or or the meeting requirement is waived if they're participating in a program approved by the student school in which a student works for an employer um, or labor organization um, during part of regular school hours and then attend school for part of those other regular hours during the school day. Um, we're currently looking at um, working to working with our CTE team um, to automatically identify these students so we can go ahead and from from our um, back end of scholar track go ahead and input that student information so we can go ahead and waive the requirement of the career discovery meeting. Um, obviously right now um, with with scholar track we are we have other priorities um, especially if you're if you're in high school you can guess what those priorities are um, so this is something that we're working with our CTE team to hopefully um, get figured out kind of you know for 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 people here who work with um, graduation details it's going to kind of look like graduation details except the school doesn't have to provide the spreadsheet themselves we have that information and we're able to upload it on our end and we can go ahead and mark off the career discovery meeting as waived um, that's essentially um, basically what the process will look like for those students um, in those participating programs. Um, another waiver or opt out is if a student um, is um, receiving career coaching services through the career coaching grant, um, they also do not have to complete a career discovery meeting. Um, currently, the status of those career coaching um, recipients or applicants, so we received 41 applications statewide um, and the recipients will be notified um, late at the end of this month. Um, the, the tricky part about this is we will not be able to identify these students automatically um, just because um, the career coaching providers do not have the information that we need to log into Scholar Track to go ahead um, and waive the requirement. So this part we will probably build into Scholar Track kind of how it is right now where students can select that they're receiving career coaching um, services um, through a provider and then go ahead and mark that that that's the way that it and the meeting will be um, marked as completed. So um, stay tuned for that into Scholar Track as well. Um, an opt out right here. So if a parent um, or an emancipated student can simply opt out of the meeting um, by writing to the school or the commission for higher education. Um, that's as simple as that. Um, they don't have to give any reason. Um, you know, they could just say, hey, you know, I just don't want my student or I myself don't want to complete the meeting. Um, that's fair. We can go ahead and just waive the requirement and scholar track. Um, this along with the next opt out, I'll explain a little bit more um, for for this school year. Um, no, um, we don't we no letters required for this year because it is a pilot year, so we're taking care of waivers on our end. Um, 
you know, and then also, um, and this is very important for schools, especially schools that, you know, are in a rural setting, is that um, a school can submit a letter to the Commission for Higher Education um, with a written request to waive the meeting requirement if a school determines that no approved entity is willing to meet with the student. So if you're having trouble getting entities um, to come to your school to complete the career discovery meeting, you can let us know via writing of that um, and we'll waive the requirement as well um, for your students. So again, um, no, this doesn't have to be done for this year um, because we're going to go ahead um, and take care um, of opt outs um, for this year specifically because um, it's a pilot year. Um, like I said, um, I already said it, so I spoiled this uh, slide is we're waiting, waiving the meeting requirement on the schools we have for those schools that are having, you know, hardships completing these career discovery meetings um, or for students and parents that don't want to complete the career discovery meeting. Um, and then lastly, bear repeating again, um, career discovery meetings are not going to impact the student's ability to graduate. Um, so if students are concerned, um, we've had counselors be concerned that, you know, you know um, students aren't going to be able to complete this meeting for any number of reasons. How will it affect graduation? It won't affect graduation. Students will still be able to walk in May um, with their high school diploma. All right, so I've done all the fun stuff talking about um, state code, talking about guidelines. Um, so now it's a little bit more fun part where I get to talk about and show you the demos. So how to complete the career discovery money in Scholar Track, what you can do as school user, um, also, um, you know, completing the entity form. So for, you know, if you're a school and you have partners um, that, you know, want to come into your school campus and they want to conduct your discovery meetings, um, you want to get them into Scholar Track, I'll show you what that form looks like and do it really quick. So pardon me while I transition windows again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead um, and start with a student uh, that has a full account in Scholar Track. So, as a student, um, you know, if you are usually juniors or seniors, um, they're a 21st century scholar, um, will have a full account um, that is verified. So, this is what their dashboard will look like. Um, and this is Sally Scholar, um, who is our favorite um, student here at the Commission for Higher Education. Um, so, it's not a real student, um, no, no, no information being divulged um, that's personal. Um, but if you scroll down in the full account dashboard, um, the last widget will say your discovery meetings and then reminding them that a meeting must be completed during 11th and 12th grade. The student will click add meeting and then the discovery meeting window will pop up. It will go ahead and ask them for the provider um, and you'll see on here, um, this is not an alphabetical order. Um, they, we do have an IT ticket that has been um, worked on already. Um, so we're hoping um, that this list will be um, sorted by alphabetical order, so the providers are easier to find. Um, and we are adding uh, providers here um, on a, I want to say daily um, routine, but it's but it's not daily. I want to say it's a, twice a week. So I uploaded it as of yesterday. So um, this is up to date unless someone submitted um, a provider since I started this meeting um, 18 minutes ago. Um, but the student will select the provider that they, that they met with, put the meeting date, um, so in, you know, in month, day and then year format. And then what their post secondary plans are so. And and these are around the three E's. So if a student is interested in going to college, you know, post secondary institution, um, employment, work, military enlistment. Um, and just like if you're interested, if you've done anything in scholar tracks, there's especially when it comes to the scholar success program, um, these are there's no right or wrong answer. You just have to complete them. We know that students' minds can change. You know, if someone you know wants to go to post secondary institution, all of a sudden they're like, you know what, I really want to serve my country. Um, I'm going to change it to to enlistment. That's totally fine. You don't have to update it unless um, you want to update it for your, for example, if they're a junior and their senior year, they change it. Then you go ahead and put that in their senior year as well. Um, you know, we're not going to be too strict about well you said you know previous year you want to do something else this year you want to do, you want to do this why is that is there a pattern or everything um we're not you know we're not going to hunt students down to you know verify that that's exactly what they're doing after post secondary we're just interested to see you know um what what those trends are here um for students all right switching again Okay, now if a student has a limited account um, or if they logged in using a temporary pin, so a temporary password, um, they're, direct, they're directed right straight to the Scholar Success Program. Um, the career discovery meetings are going to be listed at the end of grade 12. 
Um, a question um, that I receive quite often, um, and I want and I want to say it again, just to alleviate any confusion, is 21st century scholarship is not a 21st century scholar thing. Um, it is housed under the Scholar Success Program because it's the best place we found it possible um, for um, working within Scholar Track. But 21st century scholars do have to complete it just because they're juniors or seniors. It's not a specific 21st century scholar thing. So all students in Indiana 11th or 12th grade, unless um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a school that's maintained by a school corporation or a church will have to complete this requirement or complete the career discovery meeting once the junior year and once their senior year. Um, similar process um, for a student with a limited um, or an account or a limited account or they logged in using a temporary pin. Ask them who they met with. Again, um, this will be in alphabetical order, hopefully soon. When is the meeting complete? When was the meeting completed? Same thing. So you'll see on here. I've messed around with it quite often. Um, and then, what are your post-secondary plans? Again, choosing um, from college, employment, work, or military enlistment. Um, this one, I'm actually going to go ahead and complete. Um, and just to show that I'm not showing favors, I'm just going to randomly land on Endeavor Communications. And I'm going to go ahead and put today's date for 2024 and post secondary plans. All right, college. Hit save and finish. You'll see on there that there's a green check mark next to their um, completed discover first discovery meeting. I'll have a check mark um, that they are good to go. That's all that is needed. Um, same thing with a full account. There's going to be a green check mark next to it saying it's been completed. Um, the banner will still say um, that a meeting is required once for junior year and senior year, um, and it goes away once both of those meetings have been completed on the full account. All right, last two switches, I promise, before um, I start switching windows. OK, lastly, I'm going to show you what you can do as a school user in ScholarTrack in regards to your discovery meetings, um, because there are a, a few and, and I use cool very liberally here um, because I think they're pretty cool as a school user what you can do um, regarding discovery meetings. However, I know that we all have different definitions of cool. Um, so starting off with the with discovery meetings, um, if you go on the tab, any student that has completed discovery meetings will be under here um, along with, you know, the private that they met with the date of the meeting, their post-secondary plans, and any actions you can take. So I don't have anything on here um, because I w picked purposefully someone that wouldn't have any career discovery meeting students on there just to avoid any student information being leaked, um, you know, following FERPA. Um, but you'll also be able to add a meeting from here as well. Um, so you'll see on here, you can add, so for a student, for example, let's say you know they did a career coaching um, through an approved approved provider, you want to go ahead and fill it out for them. Um, you would select student. I'm not going to hit student just in case there's a student and I want to see information. And then the rest you just fill out like if you were a student. So go ahead and pick the provider, put the meeting date, and then their post-secondary plans. Um, obviously, I, I say do this as a one-off because as, as a school user, um, as counselors, I don't want you all to take the responsibility of logging your students' meetings. But if you know, for example, that a student is having a hard time logging their meeting and you're like, hey, I'm just going to do it. I have the information. I'm going to do it real quick. That's totally fine. You have the power to do that within Scholar Track. Um, you also can access um, or log a meeting for a student um, for um, in Scholar Track if you search for the student. So I'm going to search our favorite student again, Sally Scholar. And if you go to their student details, and all this information is false, um, there is a box that says discovery meetings after um, their graduation details. If you click plus, you'll see on here you can also select the provider, and then the meeting date and the post secondary plans. And then I'm going to fill this out real quick. All right, what's next? You get chosen. And then, all right, military enlistment. Again, going any meeting at Mighty Mo, not showing favoritism. Clicking save. So you can see the meeting. You can also add the second one on there as well, but you can also importantly edit it. So, for example, let's say a student says, you know what? I actually I, I lied. I didn't meet with what next? I, what's next? I met with Valley Optical instead. Um, but the meeting date was still the same. I still want to go into the military. Great. Click save. You can also delete it um, if, if for some reason a student says, you know, I want you to delete that meeting for me. You can go ahead and do that as well.
Um, and then that's it for the student search. Um, for discovery meetings, um, the tab right here is where you can run reports. So if you are curious to say, hey, I want to keep track of, you know, how many students are completing their career discovery meetings, how many more do, ha do we have to go? Who's the, who's our biggest provider? I, you know, I want to know who's doing the most meetings at our school. You can do all of that stuff on here. So um, like running regular reports, it's going to ask you for a cohort year. So obviously you're going to run um, juniors or seniors. So um, if you start typing in, it automatically does the cohort year for you. So 2024. And let's say I also want to do senior, juniors, so it'd be class of 2025. In cohort year equals graduation year. High school, so it says high school on there. It'd be your high school that you have access to in Scholar Track. However, if you are uh, an administrator on Scholar Track, you probably have access to a lot more schools, especially if you're at the corporation level or district level. So you would have to select the high school. Region, you can leave blank. Um, that just, but the way we have to generate reports, we have to ask region. Um, and then lastly, completed meeting. So you can say just, you know, let's just do whoever just completed a meeting or you can select no, or you do all your students and you get that information on there. Um, I'm not going to run the report um, because again, I don't want some information to come up, but I'm going to, and I lied, I'm actually going to switch the screen one more time. I'm going to show you what that report looks like. All right, and you'll see on here, Siley Scholar. So um, this was actually completed. You'll see it was completed um, in January 9th, 2024. So when I was testing it out, um, so it wasn't right now. Um, you'll see on there, first name, last name, um, student's date of birth, blocked out to be safe, um, their cohort year. So um, I had this student at Arsenal Tech High School. And then I had John James as the provider. And then their post-secondary plans employment work. So, um, if you know, depending on how good you are with Excel, you can manipulate, manipulate the setup, put it into tables, put it into graphs to really kind of give you a great overview of what those meetings are looking like at your school. Um, if you are interested, you know, on a very granular level, um, you can dive in a little bit more to have it look that way. You can also, you know, for simpler purposes, you know, just keep track of the students and still have to complete career discovery meetings. Um, that's obviously the main intent behind them. Um, you know, you can just ignore the nerdy Excel part that I'm talking about right there. All right, and then last thing I'm going to show you um, is um, the form. So we've gotten some questions about, you know, how does um, an entity um, get approved to conduct career discovery meetings? Um, and it's very, very easy and very brief. Um, we want to do that on purpose because um, we know that. As I'm, sorry, I'm like getting trouble picking up the form. Um, because we know that we don't want to have as many uh, speed bumps or um, um, as obstacles to conduct these meetings. So um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. Oh, there we go. All right, so here we go. I'm going to share the screen one more time. All right, and this link um, is in the slideshow. However, um, it's also in the guidance that we provided as well. Um, so this is what the form looks like when you come in. Um, we just ask for basic information. So, and the schools can also um, fill us out on behalf of the organization. Um, if you know, if if a, if an organization says, "Yeah, we'd love to work with you," we just haven't had time to submit it. Fill it out and submit it. So, um, we just need the name of the organization, the type of entity that they are. So, again, post secondary institutions are automatically approved. Um, so, colleges, universities. However, we know that we haven't not you know we have not put every college or university on there as well especially those ones that work on the borders of indiana um, or that have a large um, in-state in-state presence that don't work in the state of indiana you can go ahead and have them fill this out as well i'll add them on there i think there are a couple of out-of-state schools already on there as well um provide the first name and last name of the contact of the organization it doesn't have to be the ceo it doesn't have to be the person directly conducting the meetings just the first and last name along with their email address and then um the, the following regarding the organization's locations. If they're not located in the Indiana, I would say that you provide the information of the school. Um, we just want to know specifically where they're doing most of the work. 
and then along with the schools um, that they are um, partnering with so that the organization um, or the entity is going to conduct the meetings at. Um, if, if they are going to conduct meetings with more than 10, 10 schools, go ahead and just email us. It says grant at chd.in.gov. Um, you can also email us at cdm at chd.in.gov, which is the official career discovery meeting um, email inbox, um, which I'll mention again, because that's, you know, if there is something I haven't mentioned, we want you to ask your questions on there as well. Um, I'm going to do a test one real quick, so you'll see on there what it looks like. So test organization. With the intermediary. Tina, oh, don't know how to spell my own name. Or six to few ended up is Indiana. Um, let's just put test high school. And test two high school. And why not test three? Submit. And then it says thank you. So um, since these are the entities that are completing this form, it does say, um, you know, we're hoping they've already connected with you at the, at the school level to help conduct your discoveries, but they haven't. We encourage them to go ahead and work with connect, reach out to your school, be like, hey, we filled this form. We want to career, conduct your discovery meetings at your school, you know, to complete this requirement for students. Um, obviously, this is on there, you know, it has our CDM at chi.in.gov email if they have any further questions. That's your general. Um, inbox for all questions regarding career discovery meetings. It's as simple as that. Um, the interest email goes straight into our inbox and we go ahead and look it over. Um, if there are any questions or or for some reason we have to deny the entity, we we let the um, contact person know. Um, for example, we've had a couple of schools um, that applied to be um, to conduct the career discovery meetings um, by state code, um, schools cannot conduct the career discovery meetings. Um, if they're working with a partner um, or an organization or an intermediary, we can approve the intermediary to conduct the meeting at the school, but we can't have the school conducting the meeting themselves. So, um, and I'll go ahead and, and let them know of that. Um, like I said, usually pretty good. Um, one or two business days is when I try to get back um, to anyone that that's been in an interest form on here to conduct career discovery meetings. All right. Um, I've gone ahead um, and done sc screen sharing. I know um, I screen shared more than I thought that I said I would. Um, but again, thank you for your patience. Thank you um, for helping conduct your discovery meetings. Um, and thank you for your work. Um, we, you know, here, like I said at the beginning of this meeting, um, we believe career discovery meetings can have a very you know, bright impact as, as it comes to not just the workforce, but also helping students, especially as it comes um, to whatever path they decide after college and kind of helping define that path and, you know, light, enlightening that path essentially so that they have a plan after high school and that they're not, you know, trying to figure out what comes next. Um, again, the meeting will be recorded um, and I'm going to, well, I won't share. Oh, actually, I should share. Sorry, I, I lied. I'm going to share my screen one more time because um, I do want to leave off on. Um, on the um, school on the on the email inbox. So just in case you have any more questions, if I didn't answer a question you had here in the webinar, um, please reach out to CDM at chi.in.gov, um, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, again, thank you for joining. Thank you for taking your time on a Wednesday. I know that you're all doing great work. I know that asking for more than 30 minutes of your time is you know a, a huge ask but i thank you for being here um feel free to share um i will go ahead um and share this video um webinar with everyone um along with counselor talk with our outreach coordinators so you can go ahead and view it um and then you know study it you know um and just refer to it as you help conduct the secure discovery meetings and helping connect students with careers um that's it for me. Um, thanks again. And again, reach out if you have any questions. Um, you can reach out to anyone at the commission. Um, they have my email um, if it's easier for you that way as well. Thanks again. Um, have a great rest of your Wednesday um, and your week.